management. So what is change? What is change? Uh, first thing first. If you want something you have never had before, you are going to do something you have never done before. Meaning to say, if you expect different kind of result, you must do different things. If you're still doing the same thing every day, every week, every month, every year, at the end of the day, the result will be, diff will be the same. Okay? If you expect something different, you must do different things. That is what we call change. So what is change management? Change management is actually is a big, big, big topic. There is a book by itself called Change Management. And people in the, uh, in the field of uh, mostly uh, business administration or whatever, they basically learn this thing uh, as one topic, in fact. In fact, strategic management itself, uh, if you are doing a master in project management, that strategic management is by itself is one course. So you see, it's a very, very big coverage. But we just want to go through what is change management as part and parcel of, the, uh, uh, of our course. So change management is basically we are trying to move either individual, team, or in particular, our class is basically is all about organization. It is not uh, basically referred to one individual. It's about organization. So we want to move one organization from so-called current state into desire future state. So what is the current state and desire future state mean? Okay. Well, simply mean current state is the current condition. If, for instance, you expect in next year or in next five years, you expect your organization will be transformed in different, uh, uh, different mode or whatever, for sure, you need to do a lot of things. Otherwise, you are going to expect the same result again and again. Okay? So change management, when we, we say that we want to transform or trend uh, uh, in a transition, meaning to say you change whatever the organization, there are a few processes involved. So you must do uh, some changes in a control manner control manners or structured manners in such a way you must have some kind of model that you can refer to or basically we call it framework. So what, what is the framework? Framework normally a flow process that has some kind of limitation because you do not want uh, changes that you do getting out of control or getting out of hand because, because you might not want to do a big, big, big uh, changes in one go. Maybe you are going to do a bit of changes, perhaps 5% um, uh, in first year, another 20% second year and whatnot, uh, bit by bit. So that's what we call a control menace. Okay, philosophy of change. Why basically we need to implement some kind of change management. Can we just simply don't do uh, any changes? If, for instance, our organization basically keep running and making money, so why do we need to, to make changes? Well, in a simple term or situation, when we talk about organization, the main component of organization is basically people. And you know what? People is basically the most difficult element to basically control because people do change, not to say every year, every day, every day, every hour, every minute, people do change. Okay, that is the issue. Even though you might have a perfect system, a perfect rule, guideline or whatnot that uh, make your organization running smoothly, but you never know because people change. So because of that, you must make changes in order basically to control the behavior of the people, okay? So that you shape the behavior of the people to, uh, to basically behave in certain manners to the extent that this is what basically you want your organization to be in the next 
uh, two or three years. Okay, simply say the issue of human. Okay, human do change for whatever reason. Okay, we talk about the framework. Okay, you notice that this is a framework. Okay, when we talk about framework, the uh, framework simply say the process. The first process, understanding the current state of your organization. Current state meaning to say current situation. What is your current situation with regard you with regard to your organization? Okay, so we are going to go into what are the things that people look at when people want to make changes. Maybe in terms of the uh, competition, maybe in terms of uh, financial issue, and etc. Okay, second one, establishing the state in which organization want to be in the future. This is what we call desire future state. In the next five years, you expect, okay, you expect your organization to be what? For instance, you are producing, uh, you produce some kind of uh, tools such as handphone, or you control the network. In Malaysia, we do have a, um, what we call a hand, handphone provider, Cellcom, DG, whatever. So maybe they, among themselves, they are competing. They want certain market share. The bigger that you control the market share, meaning to say, uh, the, you are in the comfort zone. But you never know. Competitor, competition is very stiff. Maybe right now, let's say DG is a number three uh, operator. Maybe in the next five years, they want to be number two. Or to a certain extent, they want to be number one. Okay. So if that is the condition or situation that you want to be, then perhaps number three, okay? Step number three, now you need to plan, okay? You need to plan to move your organization from current condition into the one that you envision, okay? So this is what we call framework. Framework involves a few stages, step, or workflow, but in a more controlled manner, there are limitations. You do not want the changes that you make is basically getting out of the control because sometimes it involves a lot of money. Okay? You cannot afford to make big changes in, in a matter of uh, five years. Maybe you need uh, a bigger time span, perhaps. Why is change necessary? Okay? Change necessary simply means simply uh, uh, because we are dealing with uh, un, maybe present situation or condition, unpleasant situation or condition, okay? Where our competitors are getting stronger and stronger. If we do not do something, maybe in the next five years, we are going to be extinct, okay? That could be the condition. Or we do have problems, okay? Whatever problem in your organization that you want to basically uh, want to get rid of. When you want to get rid of, then you need to do some kind of changes. Changes might not be big. Small changes is okay as long as you resolve the ongoing problem, okay? That can be considered as a change management as well. And then number two, okay? Determine whether there is need for change. Ah, this is very important. You do not simply make changes because others are doing that kind of exercise. No, you do not do that. There must be reason. Because changes is not easy. In organization, sometimes, if you, if you notice in Malaysia, there are some big corporate, uh, such as banking system, uh, CIMB, Maybank, Telecom. Whenever there is a new boss coming into this organization, you notice that one of the things that they do, they change the logo. And when they change the logo, you just imagine if CIMB, Maybank, they do have a thousand or thousand of branches all around the country. Just imagine how much money involved in order to change the uh, billboard of the uh, bank. It involved millions of ringgit. Is it necessary to do that? 
Okay, so we need to ask that that kind of question. All right, then the last one is basically to establish change goal or objective. What at the end of the uh, exercise that you want to fulfill? Okay, you must have some kind of target. So that's why in order to make changes, you must basically have reason for that. And then you set some kind of KPI. Because at the end of the day, you want to measure to what extent you already have a KPI fulfilled. And you know what? From You can Google uh, the YouTube to see whether the change, changes in the organization basically has been 100% successful or not. And I can tell you from the report that we have seen, maybe around 30% are successful. The rest are basically remain the same or some of the changes basically can be said as a fail. Okay, uh, that is the issue. Because when people do, do want to make changes, they do not have a clear idea what they want to change to a certain extent and sometimes the strategy and the action are not there. Uh, they might have some ideas, but then the implementation strategy are very poor at the end of the day, it remains the same, as if we never do any changes at all. Okay, what need to be changed? Okay, we need to examine various elements. And then we come up with a short list of uh, items to be changed. Okay, let's say you have problems. So you list down all kind of problem. And in fact, among the problem also, they, sometimes the problem might not be significant. You can just simply do some kind of exercise. Maybe the, the, the problem basically disappear as a matter of weeks. But when you get stuck with uh, uh, not only uh, execute that in weeks, but you need a big transform transformation. Transformation in terms of what? Changing the way people behave. That is the most difficult thing. Okay. So you can start listing out all the things that you thought that you want to make changes. And then, you know what? When any changes, for sure, you are going to go through barrier, hurdles. People are going to resist to change. So you must expect those things, okay? You must expect the barrier or the resistance and the barrier resistant or this impediment also need to be managed. And there are a few strategy that people come out with, okay, in order to basically uh, manage the barriers, okay. And then how should change occur? First, come up with a strategy, okay. So sometimes you're already clear on what are the changes that you want to make, but the issue why basically uh, the change might not be successful because sometimes lack of strategy. You do not come up with a proper strategy. Uh, maybe you, you need to have a few plan. Plan A, B, C, D. What if plan A that you thought that it is a perfect plan doesn't work? So plan B must be there. Okay. Subsequently, a few other alternatives. Okay. You never know. And then implementing the the change strategy. Once you decide what are the plan that you come up with, you implement and then you basically see to what extent you need to monitor. You need to monitor and basically control okay, the strategy so that basically you achieve the uh, targeted uh, KPI for your uh, change uh, management. And then, uh, this, this is the issue, okay? So we talk about when you want to make changes, you simply do not make changes for the sake of following the trend. Everybody make changes for this 21st century, then we also need to do, to do so, no, no. Basically, you need to look at uh, your organization, basically strength, weaknesses, and whatnot. This is what we call gap analysis. You need to do gap analysis. When we want to do gap analysis, 
for sure we need to look at some of the hard data or the soft data. Hard data may be the statistic, the financial report that you basically every, every year, every organization will come up with all kind of report and whatnot. So that can assist you to see what could be your strength, what could be your weaknesses, and out of that, you basically uh, try to, to, to reduce the uh, threat and then try to grab the opportunities. Okay? For instance, what are the things that you can look at? Um, financial indicator okay? from your financial report. Every year, especially um, company uh, which are listed in the uh, stock market, for instance, it is a must for those companies to produce a report where public can view. Okay, where public can view. Sometimes people wanted to buy share of the company. When they, they want to buy share, they look at all those uh, indicator. When uh, performance is not up to the standard, uh, then there is a problem. People simply do not want to buy your share. So when people do not want to buy your share, Basically, you are going to have less cash in order to reinvest or to grow your organization. That could be a potential issue that you need to resolve. Okay. Then what else? Market share. Okay. In a global compet uh, competitive market, uh, let's take a look at the handphone. Handphone producer. Previously, we do have uh, what we call Apple, uh, Samsung going head to head uh, 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 competition in terms of grabbing the market share. But now we are seeing the Chinese uh, handphone maker, Huawei, Oppo, Vivo, and whatnot, are uh, getting some cake into the global market. So, company like Samsung and Apple they must, must basically do something. Otherwise, they are going to lose market share bit by bit. Okay? So that's what happened to, if you remember, Nokia. Perhaps, I'm not really sure you have been using Nokia or not, but older generation like me, everybody know Nokia. Uh, one of the market leader in handphone. But what happened to Nokia? Suddenly, it disappeared from the market. Only now it's coming back but perhaps it is too late already, okay? All right, then increase turnover. So what is this turnover refer to? Turnover, when we talk about uh, people, it can be referred to people coming and go into your organization. Another uh, terminology with, with uh, respect to turnover, uh, this can be referred to uh, how much how much sales you make per year. So when we talk, the, the, the word turnover basically can be referred to annual sales or the word turnover when we refer to people basically uh, referring to people come and go. Come and go into your organization. What does, if you have high rate of labor turnover, that basically is not good. Why? Because people coming and go in your, into your organization at a very fast, uh, faster rate or high rate. Meaning to say there, there is something wrong with your organization. Because people only come uh, to your organization to work for one month and then they left. And there are new people coming. So meaning to say there is no bonding, no attachment uh, when people go into your organization. So... There must be, it is not a popular place. When it is not a popular place, you must ask yourself, what exactly that you have done wrong where people do not stick in your organization for a very long time, okay? So it is not good for organization because why? You need to retrain and retrain a new, a new recruit, which basically you are wasting time because uh, why people are trying to get accustomed to the, your uh, work culture, people tend to make mistakes along the way. 
So meaning to say your productivity is not going to be 100%. So this is what we do not want in the organization. And then lowering result of quality indices. For instance, a car manufacturer normally uh, are very concerned about uh, quality indices because uh, they are consumer complaint. Whenever you purchase a car and then people try your car for every day, then people basically have a problem and they will basically talk about in a forum in, and then there are some kind of organization that measure the uh, quality issue. And when those are being published openly, then it will give some kind of perception toward uh, your, basically your, your product. People simply do not want to buy your product if the review based on the quality and et cetera, et cetera, are very poor. So you must basically take care of those things. Similar to the either client complaint or consumer complaint. When we talk about client complaint, for instance, if we are talking about civil engineering uh, contractor or even consultant, so they are working under client, okay? Because the client is the one that pay you money. So if, let's say, you are working with certain client, if the, the client keep complaining about your work again and again, what does that thing mean? Meaning to say, next year, you are not going to get any more job with the client, okay? If you are working, you have been working with the government, for instance, so you must take care of this uh, client complaint because government being um, majority of the half, maybe half of 40% of 45% of the contract will be coming from the, uh, from the government. And government is basically is a very good paymaster compared to the private sector. So you might want to take care of this uh, client complaint or even a consumer complaint, okay? And then taking care of the, uh, your staff is also very important. Let's say about the issue of work-related stress. Nowadays, people are very concerned about work-related stress or well-being, okay? Wellness or well-being of the workers at the workplace. If people, for instance, in, in your organization, you have high rate of ab absenteeism. What does absenteeism mean? People do not come to work. Okay, high rate. Today, maybe uh, five people not coming. Tomorrow, there will be another five. People do not like to come to work. There must be reason for that. Maybe they are not feeling well, real cases. Maybe they are not feeling, uh, feeling well due to high high pressure or stress at your workplace. So that is not good for your organization. So you must basically try to do something. This is what we call change. You must change, okay? Try to, to do some kind of changes so that you try to remove this issue, okay? So looking at all kind of uh, lists, this is just example of the listing um, that could be a good indicator, but don't forget about what? Don't forget about the technologies, the cost, and then the market condition, and then your competitor, okay? So let's say your cost is increasing every year and uh, day by day. At the end of uh, next few years, you cannot basically produce uh, the current product at, at the price that you can offer. So meaning to say, in the next few years, you are going to lose your competitive advantages unless you do something. So try to figure out how are you going to go in, uh, into cost reduction uh, exercise. So that could be the strong reason um, when you need to embark on this change management, okay? Similarly, technologies. So nowadays, because of this COVID-19, whatever, uh, this is a classic example, a good example of the whole world are, are going into the change management exercise, whether you like it or not, okay? So now the whole organization are being uh, forced, whether you like it or not, 
to move some of the operation into virtual things. Okay, utilization of technology or ICT, perhaps a lot more compared to uh, the current uh, uh, practice. Because perhaps uh, before this, people are trying to resist those kind of uh, ICT things due to, the, to the, due to the fact that when computer can replace you, meaning to say you will be out of the job. That's why people are going uh, very slow in order to adopt all kinds of technologies. But now, since uh, we are being forced to embark on the utilization of uh, technology um, from, uh, from totally maybe 360 degree um, reverse from what we have been doing, so perhaps organization uh, next move would be uh, try to incorporate this IC2, uh, ICT into the organization in a bigger portion, in a permanent ways, okay? And we will see how in the next few years anyway. All right, establishing a change goal and new end state, okay? So, when we already decided that we need to do some kind of changes in our organization from the list that we we talked about in the previous slide then perhaps we come up with the goal objective to what extent that we want to our organization basically to change but perhaps uh, having goal and then strategy is good things you cannot deny this issue okay the so-called, I, I would call the motivational aspect. When, we, when you want to make people to change in terms of uh, working harder, smarter, creative and whatnot, you cannot uh, run away from the concept of what is it that people will get. People will not change simply that you ask them to change without them getting anything. So from now on, if you want to make changes, it must be tied up with the reward system. Okay, what is it for the employee? If you ask employee to work harder, smarter, more, uh, putting more innovation in the uh, in the uh, job specification, you are asking people to to work harder than before. So people will start asking, what is it for me? Okay, organization will be making ton of money. And what do I get? Uh, that is the, the issue. For instance, classic example again. We are in the university, for instance, lecturers. Uh, every year we are dealing with the issue of ranking. Okay, University, of course, wanted to go up and up and up into the ranking, uh, whatever QS ranking. And then uh, they are very proud. Okay, this year our ranking is a uh, number whatever, 200 and something. Perhaps next year, for sure, they want to see the ranking going up and up and up. But in order to go up, you are going to, to force the, uh, the workers, the lecturers, the staff and whatnot to, to work even harder. The question is that, let's say we are even in number one position. What do we get? Ah, that is a big, big question mark. Because we in the university, for instance, because it is government university, the salary scheme, the, the, the pay is similar. Anywhere you go in Malaysia, if you are working in a, a non-performing uh, organization and whatnot, in government sector, you are still going to get the same salary, the same bonus, and and that is the concept unless uh, unless you have different um, uh, what we call payment system okay bonus salary scheme that you can use that kind of thing as a carrot and stick okay then only it will be a big motivational uh, what we call uh, incentive so that people can uh, work a little bit harder all right. Okay, what need uh, to change? Okay, we already uh, talked about what are the list of changes 
Okay. So six critical area. Uh, the changes normally involve work process, competency with regard to individual competency, the use of technology such as ICT or automation or robotic, whatever. And then you need to change organizational structure, okay, to the one which is more dynamic instead of uh, static. And then you can change the system and you can also change the culture. But to change the culture is not going to be easy. But it is worth, okay? If you are able to change the culture, normally will take a few, uh, some time anyway, that will be a perfect changes because you are going to be, uh, to be assured that the changes will be permanent. That is the biggest thing that any organization can embark or can basically do, but it's not going to be easy. But the good thing is that once you can change the, organ the culture, you are going to be uh, happy at the end of the day, for sure, you will see the result. Okay, this is what the, um, the ultimate uh, objective, but uh, we can start bit by bit anyway. All right. And then, of course, retaliation. This is what we call resistance. Always expect whatever changes that you uh, propose, even though small changes, please expect resistance. Because you know what? When, uh, when uh, you make changes, for sure it will affect some kind of individual. Some individual have to be moved from uh, one unit or department in section into another section, which he might not be comfortable at all. He just imagine he has been working in that kind of department section unit for 20 years. Then suddenly, because you are doing some kind of restructuring exercise, then uh, you, you have to scale down on that kind of unit. Whereas you need more people in a new unit, for instance. So what would happen to that guy? So that guy basically need to learn new things very fast because he's going to pension in the next few years. So you just imagine tremendous pressure will be on that guy. So he need to learn new things. He need to change the mindset. Oh my God, just imagine. That's why people resist. Okay, so expect some kind of resistance. And then another issue when you want to make changes, uh, which area that you need to focus? Is it the technical factor or is it the people? Often time, okay, often time you focus on the wrong things. That's why you need to perform the gap analysis thoroughly. At the end of the day, you do not make a wrong move. Maybe it is the people that you need to, to make changes. Or even the, when you talk about people, what aspect of the people that you want to make changes? Okay, that will be an, another set of questions that you need to ask. Okay, sometimes people simply say, oh, we are not performing to the level that we want because certain individuals are lazy. Certain individuals are just basically um, are not working productively that would be some kind of perception. But, okay, it might not be true. The lazy, pe the lazy people that we thought of being lazy, maybe he is not being put at the proper place. Maybe our system of work, rule, guidelines are not clear. Where you allow certain people to be let go when they are not performing anything especially when you are measuring the KPI based on a standardized uh, system, you need to customize actually, okay? Because every section, every unit, they have their own KPI. They must be basically measured differently. But oftentimes, we as the management basically are lazy in some way. They come up with a system that measure the performance of everybody based on only one uh, standard measurement, which is not correct. 
everybody have their own skill, their own ability, their own interest, their own creativity. They should be measured differently. That could be the issue. Okay. Sometimes people who, who are being considered lazy, when you put them into a proper place where basically they are very much interested in that kind of uh, feel, they can work creatively. They can be very independent. They can basically uh, contribute more uh, compared to uh, being at uh, the previous uh, work area. So you need to understand uh, your own people uh, and the characteristic in order to make changes which basically can have effective uh, results. And then the depth of change. To what extent you want the changes to be? Okay. To what extent is it? We can consider as uh, big changes or minor changes. So what is minor changes? Okay, sorry. Minor changes. Minor changes normally involve a slow, okay, slow modification that does not involve changing the behavior and the thinking system. Okay, the way people behave or the way people do things may be still the same, but you do some kind of bit by bit changes. This is what we call minor changes. Okay. So sometimes these kind of minor changes is for you to solve certain problem only. You do not expect the whole organization to be transformed into something that you have not uh, done before. If you want to go into that kind of things. Let's say your problem is very, very big, where you need to basically transform the way people behave. You, you, you need to shape people into a behaving or certain habit so that the whole organization transform into certain manners. That is what we call major changes. So that would be called transformational transformation okay we in malaysia we do have uh, this kind of terminology being associated with uh, when we do have changes in government okay if you notice that uh, we have been changing government uh, like previous government barisan national uh, at that particular time a few years back we have heard about transformation plan so when transformation plan is being used, meaning to say we need to transform many, many, many things because we just simply cannot avoid, cannot, uh, cannot do small changes anymore. Small changes doesn't have big impact. Okay. And then level of management involved. Okay, this is another issue. Oftentimes, when people wanted to make changes, People focus on, uh, the, especially the management, focus on the people at the lower, the lowest rank, because they thought those are the uh, the people who basically created the issues. They forgot that they are the one that basically could be the uh, the issue with regard to we are not performing up to the standard. If you read Kodak, K-O-D-A-K. Perhaps some of you might know Kodak. What is Kodak is all about? Kodak is one of the biggest uh, company ever existed at that time, way back in nineties, in nineteen nineties. Uh, they make a billion of uh, dollars profit per year. Whereas no other company can make that much money because they are in control of so-called film. When you want to snap picture using a, a old kind of camera, you need to have some kind of film. And Kodak was the one that basically invented those kind of film. But what happened after that? 
Okay. Kodak basically went into bankruptcy uh, way back in 2000 and um, if I remember 2005 or whatnot. Okay. Just imagine from a big, big company and then uh, into the bank bankruptcy list in the US. But Kodak still exists until now. But compared to the old, old uh, golden, uh, golden years of uh, uh, Kodak, just imagine what happened. Well, they have some big issue. Issue is what? The CEO. CEO meaning to say the top management. Okay. So it is not the lower uh, level people that are having problem, but basically the thinking of the top management. They are the ones that do not want to change despite all kind of suggestion being made by um, the people from the uh, perhaps bottom, middle. They just simply do not want to change because of their attitude, they bring down the organization into the lowest level. You see, that is the issue. Some of the impediment, uh, this is what we call barrier, could be what? People do not want to, uh, to change simply due to what? Problem. Well, we can say that we are having some kind of problem. So we, we, we need to make changes in order to solve the problem. But in doing that, we never know. We might create a bigger problem. So that's why people do not want to change. Okay, people do not want to, uh, people do not foresee what could be a bigger problem. We might be happy with solving uh, the existing problem that we have, but what is the, what, what is the, uh, the so-called the uh, benefit of solving a small problem and then you are getting a bigger problem. Uh, that could be the issue. So people are afraid of the unknown or uh, potential problem because we never know. Sometimes when you, we do some kind of changes, we are going to see the impact only in the next few years. Then only we can see that is the issue. We can predict to a certain extent, but uh, prediction and the reality is not going to be the same. All right. And then the issue of coordination. When you merge a certain unit in your organization, certain section, unit, department, and whatnot, uh, classic example is in UTM. UTM, we have been uh, uh, named uh, so-called the school previously by the name of the faculty. We have been running that, uh, the faculty name for instance, Faculty of Civil Engineering for many, many years, since, I don't know, 67 years or whatever. But then suddenly, a few years back, I do not know, people have ideas, oh, okay, why don't we do some kind of merger between all the faculties so that we can name just one engineering faculties and then we rename the, faculty, the, the previous faculty by the name of school, you see? And then what happened now? If you are in our position, uh, then, then you will understand. We are having kind of some kind of headache with regard to this merger because there are some bureaucracy and then some coordin coordinate, uh, coordination issue because we are being merged in uh, basically uh, not in the most ideal condition. Okay? Normally, when you are doing some kind of mer merging, you are merging in a very similar some kind, kind, kind of unit, but in our situation, it's totally different, okay? And that is the issue. And then competing activities. Competing activities simply mean when we are, we are doing some kind of restructuring, for sure, normally, the purpose of restructuring, normally you are going for downsizing. Normally, when we are talking about restructuring, whatever, uh, at the same time, downsizing, you are not upsizing the organization. When you are downsizing the organization, what does that thing mean? Meaning to say, normally, let's say you are doing uh, three tasks 
uh, per month or per week, uh, per uh, semester, whatever. Now, instead of doing just three tasks, you have to basically take over other people's tasks. Maybe now you, are, you have to do six tasks at the same time. So each task basically has the deadline. So that's why they are competing at each other. Okay. So basically you only have two hands to leg, but you need to finish everything uh, at one go. You see, uh, that is the issue. That is the competing activities. Insufficient okay. skill and abilities. Okay. Insufficient skill and ability. What does that mean? Sometimes when you are being put into different uh, section, unit or organization, so meaning to say, you might not have the uh, skill when you are being put in that unit. You totally basically is uh, uh, not familiar with that kind of uh, workplace. So, Doctor. Yes. Uh, one point is not clear for me about the merging. The what? Merging. Merge, merging? Yeah. Okay, merging. All right. What, what's the issue of, of the merging? The merging. Okay. Uh, merging problems. Okay. So merging meaning to say, instead of uh, having a different uh, department, section, unit, or faculty, whatever, now you are merging into one single faculty. For instance, in UTM, we do have separate faculty. Faculty of civil engineering, uh, electrical engineering, and whatnot. And the boss at the faculty, we call it the deans, okay? that we normally call in other universities as well. But since uh, the merging, merging meaning to say all the faculty now we are being put together into one single faculty that we call it engineering faculty. But in our situation, our faculty are not located close by. You see, faculty of civil engineering, the, 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 the old name was uh, at the end of that corner. And then civil engineering is here at the end of the corner. But then we are being forced to work in one unit. So you just imagine how we are going to basically every, every now and then we need to go uh, at one place to meet. Okay. That would be the, the physical hindrance. Normally in any organization, uh, section and unit, they, they belong to the same organization. But then instead of... Uh, they are being put in separate uh, department, but now they are merging, merging meaning to say, they are being grouped together in order for all those people to work more efficiently. But now in our situation, we simply cannot do that because even though we merge uh, faculty of civil engineering and uh, electrical engineering, we are basically totally different field. We cannot use the same resources anyway it is un unlike the uh, normal way of uh, merging. Uh, that is the, the example that I'm trying to, to give you. I'm not really sure whether you can understand the situation or not. <laughs> that is the issue. All right. Okay. okay. Then uh, we already covered on insufficient skill and ability, inadequate training. Okay. Then people say, if you are lacking some kind of skill, then the best way, send them to training. But again, when organization are merging or scaling down or restructure, the intention is basically to reduce the cost. At the end of the day, always reducing the cost. When you are in the reducing cost exercise, meaning to say you do not want to spend on training that is the issue okay so there is a mish, mismatch between you uh, you want people to be skillful or uh, know how to do the work but at the end of the day you do not want to give them sufficient training because you are trying to cut down the cost so at the end of the day people are being forced to learn by themselves which is not going to be the most effective way 
we cannot basically learn by ourselves. Okay, even lecturer, uh, even even though you can read books, you can go to the YouTube and watch all kind of things, but that is not going to be hundred percent effective. The best way to learn is basically to let people who are very expert in that particular field and to uh, to guide you. Uh, that is the best way to learn. Okay. Uh, similarly, if you you have uh, the uh, football player, okay. A good team, football team, basically, they at the same time they will have a best coach in the world. And then that is the the matching. If you cannot, you cannot let the uh, even though you are a good player, but then you have a very lousy uh, coach, uh, football coach. At the end of the day, you can see the football team is not getting anywhere. Okay, even though that player itself might be skillful, you need to be trained by a proper people okay and then there are many other factors uncontrollable factors uncontrollable factors meaning to say being caused by the third party especially the government okay even though as organization you can do so much within your organization but basically you cannot basically do a lot when it comes to the government uh, rule and regulation. In certain countries, the tax incentive, the uh, law with regard to certain things basically do not allow you to being uh, so-called uh, so open. So that's why you notice that eh? companies such as Grab, Grab, by now everybody know Grab, okay? Everybody took Grab anyway. So Grab, basically the company coming from, from Malaysia. So that guy who basically invented Grab, uh, well, is a copy, copy paste, the Uber anyway. He went, he went to the Harvard uh, Business School and then one of the, his project is basically coming up with the e-hailing service. He is the grandson of the Nissan, uh, Nissan Moto Malaysia anyway. But the company uh, was based now, is basically is based in Singapore, not Malaysia. Why not you basically base your company in Malaysia? Ah, because if you understand the way the government work between Singapore and Malaysia, Singapore is much more open, okay? When you set up organization in Singapore, you basically can expand very much uh, uh, at a faster rate because uh, the way the system, the incentive, the whatever things that you, you want to do, Singapore basically encourage uh, more international so-called uh, organization compared to Malaysia. We are a little bit uh, so-called traditional. So if you want to expand at a faster rate, perhaps you can go to Singapore or even Hong Kong, where those kind of country, they, they have a more open system. They encourage a global, uh, what we call a company to come in, in order to, to have some kind of incentive. So they must uh, have some kind of rule and regulation that um, basically uh, a pro business instead of uh, you you are having some kind of things that uh, help belt uh, on certain things okay that is a uh, let's say if grab want to go to country like vietnam or laos or whatever uh, it is even worse because those kind of uh, country they might not have a proper uh, encouragement where you can expand at a faster rate that is example, okay? Resistant and how to deal with. Okay, now we are getting into, uh, I already mentioned to you that uh, we expect some kind of resistance. Resistance will be there, but they are also approach way to resist or to basically to handle those resistant, okay? You can read this table. First one, Yes. Ah. Huh? Oh, right, right. Okay. 
Okay. So the approach, the approach meaning to say, I already mentioned when you want to do some kind of changes in your organization, you have to expect some resistance. So now we are getting into this slide. How, what kind of method or ways to basically uh, tackle this resistance? There are so many ways. Number one, perhaps education and communication. And in fact, I would say communication is the key. In uh, most uh, resistance, uh, people resist due to lack of communication, lack of information. People do not know uh, why, why they need to change, what is the benefit to them. So you need to tell them, give them a lot of information, engage them, okay? You, 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 uh, you uh, call them for a series of talks. You uh, let the information flow in the email, WhatsApp system, the uh, website, the poster, whatever, whatever medium of information that you can uh, give to the people so that they will uh, bit by bit understand or aware. Or at the end of the day, they might basically agree with the changes that you propose. Okay, that will be one thing. If that kind of education, awareness, communication is not working, you can go into the next step. Okay, all this step basically it depends on type of people because different people act differently. Okay, it is not to say that uh, once you give them communication, okay, they will be settled. Some people still they they want more. Okay, now you go you tackle them differently. Participation and involvement. If people resist uh, the proposal that you basically want to make changes, whatever, why don't you uh, make them participate, become a committee member, become a part of the uh, task force? A bit by bit, we have seen those kind of people who basically transform 100%. They, they become a very strong uh, so-called uh, what we call um, people who resist these kind of changes. At the end of the day, they are the ones that become a big supporter. Believe that, okay? Perhaps because they didn't know. But once they get involved with the task force, then only they, they will see the reasoning, the whole reasoning. And then they become a big supporter instead of uh, trying to resist now they are part and parcel of people who promote those things okay that could be their strategy another one facilitated uh, facilitation and support you come up with a support group okay support group meaning to say you assist people who still do not understand let's say you want uh, people wanted to to uh, basically uh, come along with the whatever strategy that uh, company basically come up with, uh, but their lack of uh, resources perhaps. So you engage them, you support them in such a way, you ask them what are the things that you need. Either it could be psychological support, it could be financial support, it could be in terms of resources support, in order for them to basically do the job in a better way, okay? Sometimes people do not want to do job if, uh, as efficient as possible because perhaps they do not have the tools, the right tools, the right software, the right computer to work with, okay? For instance, we are dealing with these kind of online things. We understand that some of you are having difficulties, especially when you uh, in certain places, uh, if we are online, for instance, it requires high, uh, high internet speed, and then it basically eaten up a lot of your data. We understand, okay? So perhaps different people will be uh, tackled in different situations, okay? If I uh, know that some of you are having difficulties in assessing the e-learning, I would have uploaded uh, alternatively 
into your email or even your in, in the WhatsApp group. That would be much faster and easier. Okay, that, that could be the alternative. That is an example of support. Negotiation and agreement. And you know what? Sometimes group of people still resist to uh, join in uh, the changes. Perhaps they are being, uh, being uh, governed or they are being influenced by so-called, we call it a uh, union. In Malaysia, we might not have a strong union. In overseas, Western uh, nation, they basically have a very strong union, workers union. And they basically have so-called human right, workers' right. And the company cannot just simply do as they like because these people will complain to the union and they come up with all kind of slogan and they, 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 they basically, uh, uh, they might not come to work for a few weeks uh, as a sign of protest. So in that kind of situation, you might go into negotiation with the uh, union or the workers' uh, leader, okay? Uh, look at what are their demands, and you, then you try to fulfill the demand to to certain extent, okay? And then, uh, the second last, manipulation and co-opting. Uh, what is this thing? This is not a, a good thing, okay? Toward the end of the list is, is not a good thing. Perhaps the first one is, is okay, the, the good thing, and then once you go down the list, uh, you, you can see there could be some kind of uh, long-term impact if you do adopt this kind of approach. What is manipulation? Manipulation is like uh, you give them promise, or we can say empty promise. Normally, politicians will do this, okay? When election is uh, coming, okay, when election is, is coming, then they will come up with all kind of manifesto. They will come up with all kind of slogan, promise here and there. And then people are, oh, okay. People are so-called interested in their promise uh, with kind of hope. Okay, hopefully when this uh, candidate basically win election, they will fulfill the promise. But what, what happened after the election? Okay, normally the other thing the, the other thing happen. They will come up with uh, all kind of uh, so-called uh, what we call um, uh, strategy reasoning. Okay, let me see chat group. Uh, <laughs> you are right. That will be the politician, and some of these politician also work in our organization. That's what we call office politic. Office politic also the same. When you want to get things uh, done, uh, when you are running out of time, uh, you make promise. Okay, we will do this and next year uh, we shall give you bonus, etc, etc. And based on that promise, people, people thought that, uh, okay, we better follow uh, the instruction we better uh, work harder than usual so that we will get that kind of bonus. But when the time come and then this boss or management will give different kind of reason. Oh, our economy now is having some kind of difficulty because of this COVID and whatnot. And okay, uh, you see, that is the issue. Okay. You can uh, get things done by using this kind of manipulation, but beware of the future problem. People will not trust you anymore, uh, you see? Then the last one, implicit and what we call cohesion. Cohesion is basically, we, we call it by force. Well, when we are so-called workers working in any organization, we simply basically sometimes we have no say. Okay, we have no say whether we like it or not, when organization want to make changes, the boss will say, okay, by next year, we will do this and that. And then everybody have to follow. That is by force. Whether you like it or not, you basically are being forced to do changes. Okay. Well, organization can, can do this, uh, can do this, but not all the time. 
if you do this kind of uh, exercise, uh, at the end of the day, people got fed up. Okay, people got fed up, and people might not uh, be working you or with you for a long period of time. Okay, because uh, because people don't have not happy. Okay, you want to work in organization feeling happy. Okay, and uh, by right, the boss should use more charisma instead of authority. Okay, a lot of time, the boss will use the authority. What does authority mean? Okay, since I am the boss, I have the authority, you should listen. Full stop. Okay. Even though you are the boss, you have the, all the full authorities to give instruction, but okay, but always use your charisma. Try to uh, because sometimes people tend to cooperate thing with you, uh, not because you are the boss, but because people feel like you are a good guy, and then people would like to cooperate. People view you as a good friends. As a friend, normally, you will basically help in whatever situation. You do not expect uh, some kind of benefit or bonus or whatever, but because you feel it is an obligation that you help your friend. That should be the situation. All right. Okay, so there are so many approaches that you can use depending on the type of people that uh, resist these kind of changes, all right? Then, mindset. Okay, in order to make changes, well, you need to go through this exercise. First one, unfreezing. What is unfreezing is all about? This is what we call mental block, okay? You have to uh, release the mental block. If people still have some, some kind of mental block, meaning to say at the end of the day, even though if you have been implementing, change, trying to implement changes for many, many years, it will not get anywhere because the mental block is there. So you have to basically unlock the mental block, okay? Unfreeze, meaning to say you let people to have an open mind. It is not easy, but once people have an open mind, then only, they will try to then then only you will give them information after information try to input new set of information into their brain perhaps they will get the idea okay so once they already buy the idea or get the idea that you are trying to sell okay in order to make kind of changes Okay, so if they, they agree with you, they already participate in the change management, then you need to do the last step. What is this last step? You need to basically refreezing. What does refreezing mean? You need to freeze back so that the changes that you already uh, put into their brain or system will not drain out. Okay will not drain out or will not basically dissolve. This is what we call uh, short-term changes. No, we want the changes to be permanent. In order that thing to be permanent, that's why you need to block them, okay? Lock them back so that those things will not drain away, okay? But uh, to do that kind of thing is not going to be easy. It will take time you need basically so-called culture. So that, that is the importance of work culture, okay? Work culture is the one that uh, we are going to have a permanent uh, solution, a permanent uh, way of doing things because work culture involves habit, okay? Involve habit. And people say it is very difficult to break the habit. Yeah, it is true. One, you already have some kind of habit uh, or the uh, way of doing things, and normally, you will do that thing again and again without people telling you what to do. That is the best thing that we want, okay? All right, how should change occur, okay? Change occur in what way? And perhaps the best approach could be collaborative and participative leadership, okay? Involve what? Communication, participation, and involvement of everybody. 
So we cannot have uh, so-called uh, people are being forced. So that is not going to be permanent. Okay, by right, you should have leadership. Leadership meaning to say, a good leader is the leader that participate. They do not, they do not just simply just give instruction. Okay, you do changes, I will watch from very far away. No, normally, a good leader is the one that do those things along with the workers. Get everybody involved, get collaboration. When people involved, they basically have so-called belongings. Okay, they belong, they, they feel being appreciated and they belong to organization. So the success organization means the success of their work. So they will feel proud at the work. That is the best thing an organization should have. Okay. All are the, uh, what are the methods in order to, uh, to uh, make changes? You can have a lot of uh, this kind of exercise. For instance, team building uh, method, uh, training, uh, group activity in order to, to, to cultivate the collaboration among everybody. And then what else? Uh, process consultation activity, third party peacemaking. If there are certain people who basically still resist, you might want to get help from third party consultant who are very good at uh, talking down with all kind of resistance. Okay, uh, coaching, counseling. People might be afraid of uh, these uh, changes, uh, cha changes activity. Perhaps you might want to engage a counselor because why? Sometimes people resist to change because they're afraid they are going to lose their job. Whereas it might not be true. So you need to have some kind of counselor to talk uh, with them to explain a proper uh, situation. And then uh, proper life and career planning. If, for instance, you want to downscale your organization, you do not want to fire people immediately. You want to have some kind of smooth uh, transition of um, uh, what we call from one workplace to another section to another department by retraining. And then uh, perhaps they will get uh, some uh, new skill uh, to be put in your in their new work uh, place so they don't feel as if they are being fired okay in certain situ situation we in utm for instance we do have what we call a succession plan we call it succession plan what is this succession plan mean okay let's say uh, myself I'm going to pension off in the next few years, for instance. Okay. So what happened when I pension off? So there could be some kind of uh, empty gap between uh, the experienced uh, lecturer and the new lecturer. Okay. So in order to uh, not to make a large void in between, so we do have what we call succession plan. We call it mentor and mentee kind of things where the new people or the youngsters basically will have to learn from the old, old uh, lecturers in such a way we call it transfer of knowledge, transfer of skill, transfer of experience uh, bit by bit. At the end of the day, in next few years, uh, so those youngsters will be ready to undertake a more drastic or bigger role, okay, uh, as we have been doing for the past perhaps 20 years in our career, okay. And then the last one is basically strategic management activities. We have not talked about strategic management uh, things yet. That will be our uh, last class. When we go through that uh, exercise, then perhaps you will understand. In uh, strategic management, we do have tools, okay, such as the SWOT analysis, the blue ocean strategy, the what we call um, uh, Porter 5 series and whatnot. 
So all those tools is basically can be used as a, uh, a tool to, to make a transition between uh, what we call a current state and then future desired state. All right. So we already uh, covered this thing. Um, we already mentioned about minor changes and major changes that we call transformation. So the best transformation could be participate, participative, where everybody participate, and charismatic. Okay, we do not want these kind of things, dictatorial or even force. This is not a good thing. Even though uh, it is not to say that we cannot use this force on the dictatorial things, we can use in in the situation where time is running out. Let's say we need to transform our organization by next year. Not, by next year is very short already. So you cannot do bit by bit. Then you, ha you have to go into full force. So basically you can use this thing. But using this thing is not going to be a, a good thing because you know that there could be a setback. People might not be happy. When people are not happy, then you are not going to get full cooperation from everybody. That is the issue. Okay, so you can read all those things. And then implementing changes. First, you need to recognize. Okay, you need to recognize what are the changes necessary. Okay, as I mentioned, you do not make, uh, you do not make changes for the sake of you see other organizations make changes because the new year is coming so we need to change no 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 you make changes for certain reason for big reason not a small small reason small reason is just a common problem that you you can solve a matter of weeks a month but when we uh, make changes normally it involves the thinking process the behavior the system and many many more the rule regulation it involves SOP, guideline, etc. And then expect resistance. Perhaps the first resistance is despair. What is despair? People basically huh, in the dark. Okay? Then people could be in the state of denial. Denial, people don't believe it. Okay? Then resistance. Then slowly they might consider. Okay? When they might consider, then perhaps slowly you will get some kind of cooperation. All right. Then development and action. Okay. Development and action. Basically, this is involved changing the behavior. Changing behavior and thinking system. Okay. A lot of changes basically involve uh, changing the way people think. That is the most difficult way thing to do, actually. It is not easy. How do you change the, the way people think? It is not easy, okay? But it needs to be done, okay? It needs to be done in certain strategy and action plan. Perhaps once you get this thing done and then you will see the result. Okay, the last part, okay? The last part is basically maintaining, maintaining the system. Once you already gone through the uh, plan, strategy, the action you imp already implement, and you want to make sure the changes that you make remain there. You do not want the changes, just uh, short-term changes. Okay? For instance, this issue of COVID, uh, COVID-19. So people say COVID-19 is going to stay for one or two years due to the fact that we have we do not have the vaccine yet. So we need to make a lot of changes, okay? In terms of uh, this, uh, social distancing and whatnot. Well, we have been going through the MCO for the past two months. Perhaps, perhaps after these two months, everybody have in their, their mind when they go out to have some kind of distance, to wash uh, their hands, wearing all kind of the uh, masks and whatnot. But sometimes it is not easy, you know. You go to the shop to buy some, some kind of food, 
you still keep very close this because you, you simply forgot the, 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 the concept. So it will take some time. Okay. So we want that kind of permanent uh, changes. So how to lock uh, the, the mentality uh, so that you will not go back to the original way of doing things, the old way of doing things. That is the issue. Okay. So in conclusion, so the past uh, one and a half hours, for instance, we can basically sum up into this uh, one last slide. Okay, first thing first, we identify the change, current state and then desired state. What is the, our current situation? What could be our current problem? So do we want to basically resolve the current problem or current situation? If we answer yes, and then what could be the next uh, condition that we want? What is our desire? What is our wish? So we must clarify that thing first. Then go into the next step. Prepare the change. Okay? Prepare the change. In fact, we can do what we call risk assessment or simply call readiness. Are we ready to make changes? Sometimes we thought that we, uh, we need to change. Okay. But then after going to some kind of risk assessment exercise or readiness survey, we figure out that majority of our workforce simply not ready. Okay, not ready. The thing is exactly the same thing that we have gone through these uh, online things. Actually, we are caught uh, what we call off guard suddenly this COVID-19 happened. So majority of us basically not ready in terms of online teaching, online assessment, not only the lecturer, even the student. And the worst scenario is the infrastructure. The infrastructure are not uh, designed that way. Okay, perhaps after going through the, this full year, next year, perhaps one or two years, we could be ready in terms of the structure, the infrastructure, even the mentality of the student, even uh, the lecturer to go into online kind of things. Okay. And then plan the chain. Okay. Plan the changes. So let's say the readiness is there. And now we move into the next step. What kind of changes that we want uh, it to be? Okay, we, we come up with the all kind of listing of changes. Either could be we need to change the, the system, the rule, the SOP, the way people behave, the thinking, etc. etc. So one, we do have those things in place, then we test run, we test run our plan. Okay, implement our plan, uh, our plan. Okay. When we implement we need to basically go into uh, another step we call it measurement we need to monitor and measure to what extent our plan basically successful okay if we see that our plan basically have some kind of hiccup then never mind we do uh, revise changes which is okay because once you come, you come up with certain plan there is no such thing as a perfect plan anyway. So it is subject to uh, a lot of changes. If you, if you are well worth with this construction industry, construction industry basically worth, uh, the industry worth a few billion. In Malaysia alone, every year we do about maybe 150 to 200 uh, billion ringgit of uh, construction activities. Even one billion ringgit of project are subjected to a lot of changes. If you uh, read, or if you go through uh, my YouTube uh, video link that I gave you, uh, changes in uh, project management. Even one billion ringgit of project we can always revise plan. So not to mention if we are uh, just managing a small company, 
we can always do changes. Okay, we can always do changes. If compared to one billion ringgit project, we are basically not much. Okay, compared to one billion, even one billion ringgit worth of project, also people expect changes after changes. It's not going to be perfect. Even though you come up with the original plan, the original plan can be changed. As long as the project is not uh, going to end yet, you can always make changes. Okay. Then last one, sustained performance. Let's say you already implement changes, then you measure your changes, then you revise your changes. Okay, every now and then. Then the issue of sustain. Okay, so what does sustain mean? Sustain meaning to say you do not want the changes that you make uh, only temporary. Maybe you make changes this one or two years is running perfectly, but in the third year, somehow something happened, then all your effort basically go down into the drain. Basically, maybe people do not, sometimes these kind of changes, when the top management, people who are very strong at this uh, exercise, uh, leave the company, resign or basically die, then we are going to see some uh, drastic uh, changes in the management. That could be the reason. But we also see, for instance, the Apple company. Okay, Apple company once uh, was being uh, the founder was uh, this guy, Steve Jobs. Okay, he he was the one that founded Apple with his friend, whatever. Apple a uh, long time ago has been a successful company. Then basically he left. Okay, then the Apple is basically going. Uh, people people do not see much. Um, product coming out from the Apple until Steve Jobs coming back to the Apple. Then he start the iPod, then iPad, then, then iPhone, then uh, the Mac uh, Pro, whatever. Then the uh, company become very successful. In fact, uh, in this world, uh, Apple is one of the biggest uh, value company. I think it value at 250 billion US dollar, okay? Or even more than that, I couldn't remember, but it is one of the biggest value company. Maybe sometimes they compete between Amazon and then Google, but uh, Apple is one of them. Even though the product might not be a lot compared to uh, any handphone company, but just imagine, okay? But when, what happened when Steve Jobs basically died? People expect that the Apple basically will go down, but it is not going that way. Why? Because once you have a good leadership, okay, that leadership basically will um, somehow uh, come out with the good or strong organizational uh, structure. And then uh, not only structure, but the most important thing is basically the culture. And then the system. When the system is basically running smoothly, even though the top management might be uh, going uh, somewhere else, um, being fired, die or whatever, but the system that keep things running. So that's why you do not see a big changes that happen to Apple. It is still sustainable due to the fact that they have strong organizational structure, they have strong culture in terms of promote so-called uh, creativity and whatnot. And then the system is running very well. So that's why they keep doing uh, things uh, as if Steve Jobs is still there. Okay. That is what we call uh, sustainable uh, changes. We do not want to see changes as a matter of one or two years. We want to see uh, how basically organization uh, keep the changes for a very long period of time. Okay, so that is uh, all that I want to mention about change management. So change management is a very big, big topic. We just 
uh, run down a few slides that just simply want to give you the concept, okay? The concept uh, in managing organization, we need all these things. We need the concept of change management, creativity, uh, and then negotiation, strategic management, uh, ethic, and then uh, the quality issue, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So this uh, subject basically have something to do with uh, entrepreneur. Remember the, mod, the, I'm not really sure, the motto, vision, vision of UTM. If you uh, read the uh, logo of UTM, uh, there is a, what we call global entrepreneur and is it innovation or whatever. So this subject is related to the issue of entrepreneur. Not to say that we want to, to have everybody to become entrepreneur. That is not the, the, the idea. We just want everybody to have some kind of entrepreneurial mindset. What basically a good entrepreneur has, they basically have creativity. They basically have a negotiation skill. And all the skill, the thing that we mentioned in this class is all about that. A particular discipline, entrepreneur. All right. So now I open to uh, any question that you have. Okay. For those who still uh, have not checked in, please do so. Okay. So any question? Okay, let me see. Bo. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's not working. What? The the application, I mean the UTM. Smart. It's not working. You cannot scan. Uh, no, maybe because. Needs to update. Oh, I need to update. Okay, let me see. Okay, let me go back to this one. Uh, Always want to update. Okay, 